Welcome to Finding the Modern Man podcast. Join me, Peter Kiri-Costa, your health and performance expert and self-leadership coach, as myself and my guests discuss and uncover what it means to be a man in today's society. Helping you optimize physical, mental, and emotional health in order to create a life with purpose and passion in the changing world that we live in. Hello, and welcome back to Finding the Modern Man podcast. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the pillar of communication. Now, communication is a vital part of our day to day lives, be it at home with the family, our friends, our work colleagues or if you're in a leadership position, the people you are leading in order to get more productive and efficient results and to maintain a happier environment. Now, communication on that point can also lead to greater understanding of each other and what we're trying to communicate. It can also lead to greater misunderstanding as well, which the flow and effects could be unnecessary conflict and a myriad of other emotions like frustration and scenarios that can flow on from there. So what we're wanting to do with improving our communication skills is improving our interaction with other people. How we communicate with ourselves as well is very important because that will then feed out to others, which we will look at a couple of areas in which the way we communicate with ourselves affects our communication with others. But first of all, let's take a look at how language and communication is built in the brain through neural pathways. Just a quick refresher on this. So when we repeat an action, in this case, language, the words that we hear around us, be it a completely other language than English, depending on where you're from or what kind of culture, depending on where in Australia you grew up. You would have been exposed to various words, phrases, different ways of talking, tone of voice, body language. And over time, that has seeped into our subconscious. That has created neural pathways that has taught us what to say and how to act in certain situations. And over time, the more we repeat that, the more solid and bound together that neural pathway becomes. So, be it positive or negative. So what we want to do is look at if you want to start changing some of these habits and communicate better, it's going to take a bit of time because we're going to be disconnecting those old neural pathways through becoming mindful of how we say and how we act and choosing a different avenue which is a new neural pathway and a new way of being yeah a new way of communicating new way of speaking and over time that will become a lot more solid now we're never going to communicate perfectly every time we're human we make mistakes on a daily basis and that's okay it's just about improving how often we communicate well and how often We can be understood and avoid that unnecessary conflict and have richer communication, deeper connection with people and improve the relationships as well. So it also affects that pillar of our lives. Now, I want to start off by looking at, with the next part, looking at the difference between talking and communicating. Now, they may not sound that different But let's take a look at an example. I'm sure whether it's you, yourself, myself, or someone you know, we've been in a situation where one person has done all the talking, they go on and on, not necessarily making a point, not discussing a certain topic, and there's not necessarily an end. It is just constant talk going through the labyrinth, the maze of their minds, their thoughts, their feelings. But it's only a one-way conversation. And sometimes we need that. We need to vent. We need to get things out. However, one thing we can do is bring someone in to the conversation. We can 
if we notice, if you notice yourself rabbiting on for a while, you can pause and go, hey, what do you think about this that's relevant to what you're saying? What is your experience been like? Or you can also just say, sorry, I've just gone on for so long. Um, hey, what have you been up to lately? Or pick something, right? Redirect the conversation to then bring that person in. So then it's valuable for the both of you, not just one person. That is becomes communicating. Even if you bring them into what you were saying previously, it's still a two-way street. And that is where... Intimacy is built. Trust, the want to spend time with someone can be affected by these elements too. A new way of communicating, new way of speaking. We can tend to get a bit caught up in talking and the bravado that can come with it. Like when you're with a group of guys, there's a certain energy or vibe that comes about, certain types of conversations that are not so healthy or just superficial and surface level. Let's break beyond that and get to deeper conversations. And that's not to say we can't laugh and carry on. Well, yes, we can. But be authentic as well. Because people can tell when you're just putting on a show, when you're posing. We want to bring authenticity to our communication. So say if someone asks you how you're going and you're not doing well, you can say, hey, I'm really not doing well. I'm kind of struggling at the moment with X, Y, and Z on my plate. And that is okay. This can be a compassionate toing and froing in communication as well and talking. And then you can lead on to something else. I don't know about you, but I find some of, some of the best conversations where you can move and flow between serious conversation and heartfelt stuff, but also just have amazing laughter as well. And it just flows naturally because you're both engaging and you're both moving from one, segueing from one thing to another. It can be a beautiful experience. And there's no reason we can't have that on a more regular basis as well. One of the areas I feel that we can go wrong as well, particularly as men, is with ambiguity, ambiguous comments, which means they don't really say much. It's nondescript, indecisive. And as an example, having been spent a lot of time in barbershops from the professional side of it, one of the most common conversations I've had over the years with ambiguous terms is along these lines. When, I, when I'm in the process of, of the consultation, finding out how a client wants their hair, what they normally have, and being met with, oh, just short, but not too short. I want it shorter. Well, not like yours. And for anyone who is listening to this and can't see, I shave my head. I'm completely bald. So for most people, the distance between completely bald to where they walk in is huge. So throwing around phrases like that is talking at someone, but it's not really communicating. And it's okay not to know. It's okay to not be able to express yourself clearly. This is when we can ask, hey, I'm not actually sure how to describe what I want or what I usually have. This is how long it's been since my last haircut. This, they use the scissors or the clippers or sometimes they use both. Okay, cool. That opens up conversation for then the other person to come back and ask more questions to get more information so you can get what you want, how and when you want it. And this is awesome because someone providing the service usually wants to give you the best they can and what you want and you're paying for it. So this is where we can open up conversation and ask, okay, so how would I describe this next time? This is an example of one industry. We could go into many others, but it's just to highlight that one point. Are the words you're using clearly communicating or are we just talking? Can we ask questions and ask for help? Another way I feel that we can diminish the quality of our communication and our conversations are through lazy pronunciation and poor grammar. 
In recent years, with the flooding of reality TV and social media, we are flooded, absolutely flooded with poor speech, grammar, even in memes. What we're reading now is very incorrect. And going back to neural pathways, that seeps into the subconscious, creates a neural pathway which then becomes how we communicate. And it's not necessarily right. It's not how we've been taught, but it just becomes the way it is. So being aware of that and thinking about what we're saying, becoming mindful and picking ourselves up, not in a berating way, not in a chastising way, but let's use the example of a very common colloquial term in Australian English now is when You may be asking for clarification, to clarify something better, to get more understanding in someone. And you may say, could you be more Pacific instead of specific? Pacific is an ocean. We can't be an ocean. But we can be more specific. And if you find yourself using these words and terms that are very, very not related in any way, you can say... Okay, cool. I said the wrong word there. Specific. Rehearse that in your mind. Go over that sentence a few times in your mind. Next time, let's try for specific. Again, it's just an example of one word. The Australian comedian Jimmy Reese does a great, a great job of making it so humorous on the words that people say wrong and incorrectly. And what becomes a problem here, it's not so much the incorrect pronunciation it's not wanting to do anything about it because on a subconscious level even though we know contextually what's being said we know the point you're trying to get across there's a little disruption in the subconscious and the cognitive the mental function of all of this so you're not connecting or flowing as well with someone you're wanting to have a deeper richer connection with and conversation. Swearing, overly swearing, is another area where I feel we have dropped the ball. In Australia, yes, we are known as being pretty loose on the tongue. And it has its place. That can be okay at times. But when every sentence is littered with f bombs, see this, F that, swearing where it doesn't actually add to it or make a point... It's disrupting the flow of communication. But the biggest one that I find that's crept into Australian English is, yeah, nah. Yeah, nah, right? No. I'm not sure what's right, and I don't want to answer because it's yes and no. Is it yes or no? And on a subconscious level, if we're feeding yeah, nah into our minds, those are opposing answers. And I often wonder if the people that use yeah, nah a lot also also struggle making decisions elsewhere in their life and being definitive with action. Do they struggle taking action, making a decision and sticking to it? I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm just saying I would love to know and find out because that is a neural pathway for them which has emotions and communication attached to it. So picking ourselves up on where we could improve some of our bad habits. If you're not sure, you can ask someone. Ask someone you know, ask someone you trust and say, hey, what? when I communicate, when I talk, what do I do well that's engaging and um, keeps people listening and talking to me? And what don't I do so well? Just one to three things. Keep it short, keep it simple. Because then you can implement one step at a time. And by doing this, you're not just choosing to level up your communication, you're choosing quality connections, better quality relationships. You're choosing to improve the quality of your outcomes in life. So we can get feedback. And if you're not sure, ask. It's okay. To not know, this is how we build connection with people as well. If you find perhaps you're the kind of person that speaks reasonably well, but gets caught up on direction or where to go or tangents, 
You can also, if you notice yourself doing this, you can pause and say, hey, sorry, I just want to take a moment to get it clear in my mind what I want to say. Think about the key points you want to get across. What is the most vital? What is the most impactful for the conversation you're having? Once you've got that, boom, deliver that. You're less likely to come up with the filler words like the likes, um, ahs, because it's clear in your mind what you want to convey and how. And another point is surrounding yourself with quality speakers because our circle of influence, the people we spend the most time around are the people we become. Now, I'm not saying go out and get yourself a whole new group of friends. That's, that's, that's for another episode and another discussion. However, we've got audiobooks, podcasts. If you're in a service industry, people that are your clients or customers are going to have various degrees of communication skills. Have a listen to how they talk. Point out to yourself what is engaging, what they say well, what they don't. And could you incorporate some of this in? When you're listening to the books and the podcasts on a regular basis, you're getting better use of language. You're getting better words, phrasing, tones. So then that can be, you can start to imitate that and add it in. Because once you get comfortable imitating, then you can emulate, make it a part of you with your own flavor and your own spin on it, which is still so authentic to you. It's about being you, but better. It's these little changes along the way that make a big difference later on down the track. It's like an investment in yourself, an investment in your your communication, investment in your connection, your relationships, the depth of them as well in the long run. And remember to be kind and compassionate to yourself. If you can look through a curious lens and question through curiosity, you can be a lot more open to learning and making a difference, which will come about a lot quicker without chastising yourself or putting yourself down. And another tip to remember when it comes to improving communication, why? Why should we bother? Well, if you're completely happy with your life and your conversations and how they turn out, cool, don't change a thing, man. Keep going. But if you do want to improve it, just remember that where who you have been and who you are has got the life you've got or the conversations You've got the life you want to have requires you to build on that and gain new skills and level up, which can be a beautiful thing. So please take these tips, write them down, have the conversations. And if you got value from this, I would really appreciate it if you could like, share, review, get this out to more people so we can start getting more men on board, even if you're not male, however, whatever gender, whatever identification you are, this can help improve your day-to-day interactions in such a great way. So thank you for listening and watching, and I'll see you again next episode. Just a friendly reminder that what we discussed today does not constitute personalized advice. If you're planning on making significant changes to your life, creating a pathway suited to your specific needs and goals is recommended. Also, if you have any questions or topics you would like me to cover on future episodes, please get in touch via social media or through the website. And thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.